Hey guys, welcome back. Part 3 of my playthrough of Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. And uh, here we are. We just crossed the bridge after beating Palace 2. And now we're going into Death Mountain. Now I don't know the quickest way through here. I always just keep headed right. Just head right, head right through these caves. If there's multiple caves to go through, just go right. And uh, you're going to be coming across some enemies in here that are considerably more difficult than previous ones. But if you stay calm and patient, and you know how to beat them, which I will show you, you can get through them pretty easily. Yeah, this part of the game is definitely uh, something that people point to as being, like, uh, I guess you could say it's like the Turbo Tunnel of Zelda 2. It's the part of the game that's relatively early on that uh, is a gate for people who aren't particularly good at it. A lot of first-timers make it to Death Mountain and do not proceed further. You'll also see me pick up a lot of items that I don't need because I compulsively pick up everything I see. I think a lot of us can... Uh, to that. Alright, here we go. This guy, here. Uh, uh, it's not too different from other guys. Uh, the Dark Nuts. You just gotta jump and attack in between his little axe slashes. And we're also going to come across some of those guys that are, they look just like that, but they're red and they throw their axes. And I'll show you the strategy for beating them as well. Um, when I was a kid, I considered them to be the most difficult enemy in the game. Uh, of course, that's not true, and we will find those more tough enemies, but... Alright, just to be safe, I'm going to put on my shield. Here is Axe Guy. So what I'm going to do is jump and slash. Uh, i got to time it with his axe throws. Boom! See? Not too bad. Or you could just use jump and jump over the top of them, but, you know, I'd rather get that sweet 100 XP. Go oh, and just continue through the caves. See, one-on-one -on -one fights in this game aren't too bad. You get used to those pretty quick. It's whenever you get things... Ah, 200. Whenever, you know, something simple like a bat buzzing around your head while you're trying to battle really can throw off your rhythm. And uh, just going through Death Mountain, you'll get pretty close to leveling up again if you just, if you don't, oh god. Uh, like, I'll probably get my 1200 before I make it to the next palace. Mohawk guys. Really, I mean, in real life, they'd be the most terrifying creature of all time. Like a crocodile wearing armor, flinging axes at you. Some life, some magic. Alright. We're almost through Death Mountain. Almost there. Sometimes he'll throw two axes back to back. But, uh, really, that's just bad luck if that happens. See, now these guys, boom, one hit apiece, as opposed to two like it was before, so. You really feel yourself getting stronger, which uh, other Zelda games, 
while I, I love so many Zelda games, uh, your strength is kind of measured by, oh, I got a stronger sword, you know, it's, you, you yourself don't get stronger. A little Octorok nest or something in there. I don't know why I came in here, I just wanted to kind of show you guys the layout of this cave. Um, it's kind of like an X. Top left, exit, top right, Octorok cave. Bottom left, I think... Ugh. I think there's a pee bag. Well, these guys aren't too difficult, you do have to focus. Alright, um... Yeah, magic. And these guys, you'll get an attack later to attack them. They're too short to get, so just ignore them for now. Continue to the bottom left corner of the cave system. Oh, this is all it is. Lame. But if you need it, it's there. Of course, you had to go through one of those crocodile guys to get to it, so it may not have been worth it. guy. Yeah, th these guys are basically why people consider, ooh, aside from it being a maze, Death Mountain being difficult because those guys are just there to jack you up. Don't fall in the lava. Don't want to lose an easy life. They just keep throwing these guys at you. See, two X's in a row. Boom. And then now you get the hammer. That's another overworld item. There's no exit. You have to go all the way back to the entrance to get out of here. Just let that guy go not worth getting impatient and him barely touching you and knocking you into the lava. It's just not worth it. Said, I think it's I think it's a guaranteed item drop. Not guaranteed, but I think every ten enemies you defeat has a chance to drop an item, and it's either a potion or a health thing. Okay, so uh, when you're in the overworld, push A to break those rocks with the hammer. And fall in, and another magic increase. In this game, there are four heart containers and four magic containers. And I believe six one-ups, four of which are in the overworld, two of which are in actual levels. So um, I'll be getting most of those things. Uh, well, I'm going to get all the heart containers and the magic containers. And maybe all the lives. We'll see. There's one place in the game where I'll, I will likely take an intentional death. But uh, we're not there yet. This is not a breakable rock. And then we gotta do another bridge. Boom. Alright, see this bridge? It's nice when it's just a straight on fight with guys, but when there's like fish jumping up and bubbles, it gets real annoying. Although, now there's bubbles, and we're gonna have to fight one of these crocodile axe guys. Hundo. Okay. That does it for Death Mountain. It's not so bad. Just keep keep moving forward, keep going, and then practice those crocodiles. See, and now I can go back. 
I don't have to... As long as you make it through Death Mountain and get that hammer, it's kind of like getting a checkpoint. Because even if you get a game over... See, here's the first town we went to at the beginning of the game. Even if you get a game over, you can just hammer through these rocks and get right back to where you were. See what I mean? You get two enemies tripping you up at once, it can really take a lot of health quick. But, another heart piece makes it all worth it. Heart container, I'm sorry. No heart pieces in this game. Pretty good amount of exploring is required, especially if you're going into this game blind. There's so many, um, I don't know, hidden caves and action screens that you can't even notice unless you I don't know, seen a map, or just wander across them randomly. So, if you didn't have a guide, this game wants you basically to step on every single tile in this game, looking for every single uh, little secret. And I'm completing a side quest right now. Uh, for the next town we're going to visit. But I'm just knocking it out of the way. We don't have to go to the town twice. <sighs> yeah, this is kind of the part of the game that's kind of... They concentrate a lot of these guys. Oh, come on. Oh. All at once, which is kind of nice for leveling up purposes, but it's annoying because they really slow down your pace and they can be tough. Look at that, I'm already close to another level up. And this is actually not another magic container, this is, I believe they call it the Potion of Life or something, which essentially in other games you can drink it and refill your health. I think it's just the Red Potion from other Zeldas. The Water of Life, they may call it. Whatever it is, we got it, and it's for a side quest. have trouble with the fish going left. And then there's uh, right here, there's the tile right to my left right here is a one-up, so I'm going to go ahead and avoid that. I'm just going to muscle my way through. They don't do a lot of damage, and I'm just... I'm looking to uh, get to that next town. And you can just follow these long pathways, and they kind of bring you back to where you need to be, if you're not sure. Because the, the map is so big, you compare it to other Zelda games, and it's just huge. Uh, well, at least top-down ones, so it's easy to get lost as to where you're supposed to be headed. But the, the roads really... Uh, help out in that regard. Is it this one? No. People that come out of their houses tend to be pretty important in this game. And I'll explain what I mean later. Alright, so use jump to get up here into this church or whatever it's supposed to be. And this one is actually not a wise man, this one is a sword master. When you jump, press downward to stab. This is the best attack in the game, and it's Link's attack in Smash Bros, and it's amazing, and it really opens up the combat a lot. It's really hard. Once you beat this game, playing it a second time, and not having the down stab, it is noticeable and frustrating. Alright, refill some magic. See, yeah, people that come out of their houses tend to be uh, side quest people or something like that. She has a sick child, she explains, so she sends you out to go find the water of life, which I did before she even asked me. So now I get to visit the town's wise man. And 
I get the fairy spell, which is pretty handy. I'll show you what it does here in a minute. It's required to get into the next uh, dungeon. Uh, but it also, aside from letting you... I, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. That's basically it. This was always my favorite town as a kid. It reminds me of like the, the icing on a on a blueberry Pop-Tart. Harbor Town of Mido. Now, Mido was not a sage in Ocarina of Time. He was that little punk Kokiri kid. But anyways, now we head down to the cemetery. Uh, which is a pretty difficult area, and it's actually a pretty solid place to do a little bit of grinding. And randomly in the middle of all that, there's like this... Fountain. This tomb. Nothing to do here. It's just here. But if you head directly south. Down stab. Down stab. Boom, boom. Just bounce on people. Normally this would be a dead end, but with fairy, you turn into a fairy and fly around. This allows you to skip certain areas, save yourself if you're about to fall into lava if you're quick enough. You can even pass through keyholes and uh, skip having to gather keys. Yeah, those little guys. Down stab. Um, of course, you need the magic to use it. If you don't have the magic, then you ain't gonna do it. Go. And then it spits you out here on this island. Ready for Dungeon 3. Of course, that will be in part 4 of my Zelda 2 playthrough. Until then.